know anything and you want to see it, this is not the moment for you to listen in. Um, But I'm also going to tie it to the existence of it because it was interesting. I have a fem, my cousin asked me more information about it. I'm sorry if I'm putting him out there, but, um, you know, not being a black woman, there's things that you won't understand about the depth and sentiment that I feel with the episode. So spoiler alert, y'all. Don't say I ain't warning you. And um, let's talk about it. So in this episode of Lovecraft Country, which one thing I can say about Lovecraft Country is it really does feel like you're watching two different things at the same time, but it's so well done where you're thinking about racism and, and, and people going to die and the cops and black people and all of this. And next thing you know, it's aliens and monsters. Okay. Um, wild. But, um, it's just, it's a really dope. I love the writers. Like, I commend, and I understand why this is the wave, because it is bomb. Like, this is why we say Black people need to be in these spaces because who has done this as good, as well executed, and as nuanced? Nobody. Don't argue with me. Moving forward. So we get to Hippolyta and um, she is time traveling. I'm sorry. I did warn you that there will be spoilers. But... I think what I want to talk about the most is where she's going through different times and having these different experiences. And to anybody who doesn't get it, this is the the twofold, ex- it's not even twofold, the multi-layered experience of being a Black woman. Learning who you are before you were labeled as all of these things. The first thing, God, because she's, you know, God in this future other planet world thing. Um, The person who's like, I am. That's God. Like, I am not just one thing. I am all of these things. I am everything. I am, right? Excuse me. And, um... She says, name yourself. And and that is the literal, like, it's such a, like, it's so profound. I was so emotional this whole episode. Um, name yourself. Everyone else has done it for us, right? And we have become somebody is something, but not our own whole self. And so she experiences these wonderful, like being free, being in our body, being sexual, being um, adventurous and the fame and being around the aura of somebody, you know, magnificent. It's not enough. There was another part I'm not exactly remembering, but the most important part that I remembered is I'm probably going to think of this out of order, but the moment that she's like, I am a wife and the conversation is where she gets angry with the person that she loves because he fit her into this box knowing damn well she's a fucking genius. Like, who who gonna check Hippolyta about the fact that she was able to calculate planets that don't even exist on their axis 
connect a time machine, to connect like this other planetary Horus, whatever the hell it is, machine from the ancient white people of Adam, I don't know, the order, whatever. And she was just a wife. There's nothing wrong about being a wife, but the problem is the erasure that happens with becoming wife. Not only are you black woman, you are belonging of. Instead of freedom, being able to freely be that big, huge existence, that God body that is you, because someone else is uncomfortable and so you shrink. And that was her rage. And then the unlearning and deprogramming as she started the being in the fight and becoming a warrior had like, there were no men. Why? Because there's no need for the patriarchy and the misogyny to be in a place where women are warriors. Warriors. Because ego and all of these oppressive structures in place would force women to be small. And so like the liber- seeing the liberation of Hippolyta being all of the facets of herself, the discoverer, the warrior, the, um, you know, fun, lively experience, all of these things. Like, it shows that we're not one-dimensional and that we can be every single thing that we are and be whole And to ask for permission is a disservice to ourselves. So I just, like, I'm still, I'm still reeling from it because it's, it's a affirmation. It's a reminder that There is no need to have to fit in somewhere, you know, to feel like you don't belong in spaces is usually because these spaces were not made for us. And the oppression of Black women especially and that's all black women. It just shows how magnificent and strong we are. Let me rephrase that because I think strong is not the proper word. It just like to see the God in us um, is where it's at. To be Yeah, to be and embody and exist as the God that we carry within ourselves is our birthright. And that is the reminder that regardless of who is uncomfortable, it doesn't fucking matter. And there's no need to make yourself less than. To anyone who has told you, you are too much. cancel that like the feeling of having to lessen yourself because somebody is not enough for all that is you for all that encompasses you um and that's that's for everyone but especially black women what is your i am how do you find your way back to naming yourself again it's kind of like that meme where it's like when i ask you all of the things you love how long will it take for you to name yourself and so 
that is what that episode did for me. My gosh. I'm even emotional thinking about it. Because it's, it's not like, at least for me, it's not that I don't love myself. But we always need reminders because the world is very ghetto. Do not recommend. Um, it's just, it's a hard place to exist and be in when everything feels like it's against you. And not only feels but is and can be, right? And so be your most mind-boggling, multidimensional, sexual, creative, brutally gentle, fierce self. Ah, and the fact that we discussed, they discussed rage. Mm. The medicine in that. Our rage is where we realize our love is. And I think that's something that they said. It's the indignation of not being properly valued for all that you are. The rage is valid. The rage knows and informs where the fuck people had you messed up. And it is always demonized and we're made to be this like hyper masculine whatever. And it's when the world is against you, there is no other option but to be a warrior. Regardless of how you exist in that space, you can be gentle You can be um, kind and receptive and soft and still be fierce and still have boundaries and still not accept less and still not settle. It doesn't make you unworthy of love or accolades or being an equal. And, you know, maybe being an equal is just not enough. Maybe there should be reverence towards the amazingness that is you. So I guess this is Black Woman (laughs) Unlimited Part 2 because, yeah, Lovecraft Country was like, it felt kind of like a hug. It felt like Black is King, but like... Make it for women. <laughs> like woman, black woman is is. So shout out to Lovecraft Country for giving me my whole entire life and then snatching me right after. All I gotta say is that last episode that I watched was kinda creepy and confusing and strange. But, you know, strange is where it's at. Um, I had, like, one more thought process, and it kind of, like, left me. I spoke about mental health day. Definitely, I have rambled about all of my emotions with Lovecraft Country. I guess it's complete. Um, Just make sure to pour back into you. Um... There's a new moon this Friday where uh, it is recommended not exactly to plant new seeds, but to cultivate, review, and just, you know, keep gardening the seeds that you have already planted. It's a great energy for, like, making money, um, your values, and love. So... May we all be open. May we all... Hmm. Value ourselves before we value anything else outside of us. And, um... I did put a quote on my quote-unquote personal Instagram. And it's a note to Black women... And my biggest thought is, 